every father in the home. You can choose. Well, and it's also formation. It's bad formation. Like they don't, they weren't, and that goes to sex education because they weren't taught. Right. They weren't taught about, it's not about sex education, it's about relationship education. How do right. I relate? Okay, we have okay. Okay. This is too good. Sorry. Are we good? Okay, this is like, this okay, is going to be okay. such a good podcast. I'm so excited for this. Yes. Okay. Um, this is, I'm really excited about this. Okay. Okay, so ready to roll? Yes. Okay. Okay, guys, we are rolling into another episode of the Candace Owen Show, and we are talking about sex. Yes, <laughs> now I have your attention. Are we an over-sexualized culture? Are we not sexualized enough? Here to discuss all things sex with me, <laughs> Lila Rose. Welcome to the Candace Thank Owen you, Show. Thank you, Candace. I, was, I had to jump the gun there because we were having this off-camera conversation. Yeah. It's all really exciting. I know that you do a lot of work in, in, in talking about abortion and right. the harm. Right. that abortion brings but right. then marissa told me you also talk about chastity yeah. mm -hmm. and i was instantly like oh my goodness i have to have her on yeah. the show not because i have an opinion on it mm. um but because i almost don't have an opinion on it and i want to work through yeah. it um, well, i think you do i think you do I have think an I opinion do. i think but I you do. maybe just haven't you know we're, we'll talk about it right yeah so were did you remain a virgin until you were married yeah wow yes. yeah and that was a decision and my fiance when we were engaged and dating that he completely respected it and was on board because the value was sex is something so amazing it wasn't that sex is bad we're going to get rid of it it was that sex is something so good so bonding sex is a potential pr to bring life into the world right right and so we want to protect this incredible bond this experience that we believe is not just physical but spiritual i mean the stud the research shows that it's more than just a physical experience it's emotional it's psychological it's the most bonding thing you can do with another person right and so why would you just do that with someone you're going to walk away from that's true you want to do that with your family with your spouse now with did, someone was that you can he raise a, a virgin with. when you met him <laughs> so he would he could tell his own story i mean he i think he you know maybe had made other decisions in his life but ultimately he wanted to recommit to that because that's important though yeah, that people need before, to hear that before meeting me the years before meeting me it was a recommitment he wanted to make because he realized that's not the lifestyle that he wanted to live where he what he wanted to save that for his future wife you know and that's something a lot of people today they think oh i've already had sex it's not a big deal it's not a, a big deal anymore but it is a big deal it is a huge deal and it doesn't matter what you've done in the past it matters what you're going to do in the future and i think anybody i think you can think about it this way when you're when you're having sex with someone or you're you're dating someone it doesn't even matter even before that this is someone's future spouse. This could be someone's future wife or husband. So you want to treat them with respect. You don't own them. They don't own you. Right. So you want to treat them with that respect. So I have to ask you, you and I are the same age. What? And so we kind of grew up in the same climate socially, mm -hmm. I would say. It's, it's okay. We're both 30. We're really, we're really old <laughs> we're women old. here. We're old. Yeah. And what was that it's like for you growing up and deciding that you were going to commit yourself to God? Because yeah. I can only imagine in the climate that I grew up in, you're kind of considered the weird person yeah. if you're yeah. not sexualized. Yeah, people were when it, when it would come. It's not like I went around saying I'm a virgin, but <laughs> when it would somehow randomly, occasionally come up in conversation, people would be people were usually shocked. Like, how can you be 29 years old and you know still not have had sex? And I think that that's a complete a, a complete confusion that our culture has right now. The confusion of our culture says that it's actually normal to have sex when you're really young. Studies show, the research shows that actually early sexual activity doesn't lead to good outcomes later down the line. It actually delayed sexual activity leads to better outcomes down the line. And, and what do you mean in terms of outcomes? Outcomes meaning your relationship happiness, your economic happiness, you know, physical health <laughs> because of STIs, the potential for a pregnancy when you're not prepared for it. Mm -hmm. So I think that, first of all, that's just the social de data on that. But from a spiritual perspective, if we think sex is just an act you do, right? And all that matters is consent. It's all about consent today, right? All you need to do is consent and then you're good, right? right? That's the Me Too movement. As long as there's consent, that's good. We need consent. But consent is not enough. Sex should be about love. It should be about commitment. It should be about responsibility. And it is built to be about children. And it's only because we sterilize it. I mean, we use women. Well, think about it. All these women our age and younger are taking birth control pills. They're being told you need to sterilize yourself. You need to shut down your hormones in order to be sexually available to men. I mean, that's what that message is. Right. No, it's actually really funny that you talk about that and, and why my – well, we'll start turning in my head when you start talking about chastity because I remember just being so young and no matter what you had, I, this, and this 
always freaked me out. So I was really staunchly against birth mm-hmm. control pills by myself, came up with that conclusion all by myself. Yeah, it's very dangerous for it's our It's dangerous, health. but the way that they promote it is what turned me off to it immediately. Mm-hmm. So it was sort of like you turn 12, you go to the doctor, you say you have a pimple. They're like birth control right, pills. Right. Go to the doctor, you say they you have a headache. They don't look at the underlying problems. Birth control pills. You could say right. anything and right. they say birth control pills help. And at a very young age, right. I was very suspicious of that. Good. And I, I, I swear. <laughs> and, and I said – uh, I don't know why every time I have any ailment, you keep telling me this birth yeah. control pill is going to fix it. But just a, it's, it's a no from me. It's yeah. a hard no from yeah. me. Uh, but it is interesting because when you learn about all of these topics regarding sex, whether that's abortion, whether it's about having sex, you learn about it in a very weird way in health class, yeah. which is almost like, yes, of course you should be having sex. Right. And by the way, if – if you get pregnant, you should just yeah, have, you know, an have an abortion. Have an abortion. They yeah. don't. They don't tell you anything right. about what it means right. to like what a fetus is, what it looks right. like. Nothing. It is just you are a responsible individual right. if you have an abortion. Yeah. If you're not married, because this child is going to have a horrible, uh, uh, toxic life, mm-hmm. and the best thing you can do as a young person is to have an abortion. So, what is that sexual education doing? Yeah, it's sexual miseducation. So, plan. I mean, Planned Parenthood is behind this. They're, they do the most abortions, and they're one of the number one sex educators so they're getting grants from the government to be that sex educator in the classroom for kids as young as grade school so little kids to tell them that sex is not a big deal sex is some activity that's normal that anybody should do when they're young so this is sexualizing kids like little kids like you know sixth grade fifth grade and it's 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 trying to rip away the spiritual relational part of sex, like that sex is designed to bond two people together. That is not just about a momentary pleasure. It's about a light, l- l- supposed to be a lifelong relationship. Right. And it can p- bring children into the world. I mean, for all the condoms, for all the birth control pills, there are still so many unwanted pregnancies, as they call them, that there's almost a million abortions a year. Okay. So it's not working. There's it's something not about it that's a, that is a bit oxymoronic. So why would at the very same time that they're promoting people to have sex, would they also be promoting people to not? They don't want them to have the babies, though. So what? They do. I mean, I, I think Planned Parenthood. I think Planned, I think Planned Parenthood has created a market for themselves. Okay. Because interesting. Because they oh are sexualizing kids. First of all, this you idea need to get the birth control pill. Yeah, and, and by the way, this idea that abstinence, meaning delaying sexual activity or not having sex, is impossible is a flat out lie. I mean, I'm abstinent. Right, you and I are abstinent right now. I mean, right, like, right. in the studio. And when I'm when I'm married, I'm abstinent with anyone else except my husband. I mean, it is a fidelity to just my husband. So we have self-control. We have the power to treat our bodies with respect and responsibility and to treat other people the same way. And to send the message to kids that they don't, that it's inevitable that they're going to have sex and that they're going to be safe as long as they use a condom or they take birth control is a complete lie. It does not protect their heart. It does not protect their mind. And it also doesn't protect their body because at STI, you can still get an STI. You can still get pregnant, even using contraception. In the month before getting an abortion. So women who get abortions, it's about the the percentage is about half of women who get an abortion say that they use some form of contraception in the month prior. So it's not like they didn't know about contraception. Right. They were on it or their partner was using it or something failed. And what happened? Or they just were enjoying the moment. And the majority of these people are just enjoying the moment, and they're enjoying that moment because they know. you're supposed to enjoy the moment. They treat abortion <laughs> like it's a button. Like, right, you know, right. if I get pregnant, oh, well, right. just get rid of the child. But this idea of safe sex, se- sex is supposed to be something safe as far as vulnerable, where you can be vulnerable, but it's not supposed to be a, something where you are, you have to protect yourself from your partner with some latex or with a pill that sterilizes you or shuts down your hormones. How is that really self-giving and feeling vulnerable and free with them? It always freaks me out. Just instinctually always freaks me out where I would just say, why would any person want to just put hormones in their body every single Mm -hmm. day? That was an instinct that I had as a child. And it's suppressing something healthy. Right. That's the thing. Fertility is a sign of health. And this this is the message I would send to all young women. Your fertility is a sign of health. If you're having really heavy periods or a rough time with something in your your cycle, then look at the underlying symptoms. Don't shut down your entire fertility with these ph- with these pharmaceuticals, with these drugs. That's not going to actually help address the underlying condition, and it's not going to help you be healthy. And 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 it's going to create long term problems. I mean, I'm so glad yet you were so against it because they create fertility problems for women later something on. In the back of they my can head, cause said cancer, that. especially the they ones where they insert. Issues. 
something in yeah. you and you don't get like your an period IUD, yeah. for a year. Yeah. And I remember one of my girlfriends was going to get this and I was like, does something not just in the back of your head scream yeah. wrong, wrong, wrong about yeah. this? And let me just say, because I do I do want to normalize mm-hmm. this discussion in the sense that I've been very open about the fact that I took a very liberal route to conservatism. Mm-hmm. Um, so even though I was staunchly against birth birth control pills, bizarrely, mm-hmm. um, I, I didn't have this idea about sex as I, I wanted to be one of the cool kids. And so I lost my virginity when I was – I wasn't too young, but I lost my virginity mm-hmm. when I was in high school. And, and it I was normal. It. it was probably seen as like – Normal. In fact, you would be yeah. weird if right. you didn't. And I, and I regret it. And mm-hmm. and so that's why this conversation was so interesting to me. And, and why? It, why see that? That's why thing. did I regret it? Yeah. What? But what is that? The heart of that? What's Be, the regret? Because yeah. the person meant absolutely nothing to me, yeah. and I was doing it because I wanted to fit in. Yeah. I was doing it because this was the normal thing to do, mm-hmm. and you were considered weird if you didn't if you didn't do these sorts of things. So and that's it's, the culture. It's, it's not even just peer yeah. pressure from your your students. It's. Yeah. It's pure pressure from society. It's everything that you're seeing on TV. It's everything mm-hmm. that you're being taught by your teachers. And it's Planned Parenthood. I wish I had waited. In classroom. Now yeah. I'm engaged. I wish I had waited. Mm-hmm. And that's a really sad thing and a weird thing to say now, obviously, because I lived a different lifestyle. But that cr- that guilt started creeping up on me before I got engaged. Before I met my fiance, I was in a, a relationship, and I have this conversation where I was mm-hmm. like, I think I kind of want to recommit myself back to God. Mm-hmm. And my boyfriend at the time said. No. Like, if you don't have – and this is when I knew that something yeah. was really wrong, yeah. right? Yeah. You know, Meaning, like, I love you if you'll have sex with me. That was the message. That's what I heard, yeah. right? And yeah. it was, well, everything will fall apart. That's not love. That is not sex, love. It's not. Yeah. Sex is – I think his excuse, what he said to me was, sex is um, how people connect, right? It and is, but with someone that you're going to love lifelong and you've given everything to. It's, it's, more. It's, it's, it's more. It's more than that, yeah. You know, and yeah. so it's interesting to me – that I, I had this guilt mm. sort of creeping up in me in my mid twenties, mm. thinking that I had done something really wrong and really terrible, but I had just accepted that that was okay and that's what you're supposed to do yeah. to earn the love. Mm. Uh, now you'll stay with me, right? Because we're having sex, and right. ultimately, it, right. it it means nothing. And I think a lot of people that's why they move in together. It's like the man's not marrying them, right? So they're not down on one knee, offering the ring, pledging their life to them lifelong. So that we're gonna try it out. Right or the woman is even fearing commitment because some issues in her past or fears of commitment. So we're gonna move in and try on marriage. Mm-hmm. We're gonna like put it on and see if it fits. That's not gonna set you up for success because you're already going in with conditionals. You're already going in ready to walk away. Right. You're not going to practice for marriage that way. You're practicing for divorce that way. Wow. And the statistics show that. The statistics show that if you cohabitate before marriage, you are more likely to get divorced. Which is really interesting. So why do you think that we have this culture? right now that glorifies I guess being non-committal, right? Yeah. They're we glorify having multiple Sex in the City. What was that whole show about? Yeah, no, it's all about right. Yeah, that, and and sex. I loved that show when I was yeah. younger. And and what they're basically <laughs> they saying is so that they looked so cute. They looked so cute, and they had yeah. Fendi bags and Prada yeah. shoes, and, yeah. and, and they went to brunch all the time. They went to brunch. <laughs> what message is that sending to young yeah. girls? Is that this is cool, this is right. hip, and this is empowering? Right. And we start to emulate that behavior, right. and now we see these articles, these Buzzfeed yeah. and bustles of I had a one night stand, and it was amazing, right. and it was great, and on ten tips to please your man like it's all about all these women's magazines it's all about pleasing and it's not your man like your husband who's committed to you for life it's some random dude you happen to be seeing you're not even dating you're hanging out with so yeah i mean it's very toxic it's toxic for women but why I think it's Markets? the result. I mean, I think a lot. I mean, they're selling tons of product. Right. So, I mean, the ph- contraceptives is a multi-billion-dollar industry. Contraceptives, yeah, it's yeah. A, it, and the whole women's world of like fashion and, and grooming and everything. I mean, it's a lot of money involved. And that, that's not all bad. I mean, I think that can be used for good. But what happened was there was the sexual revolution, which happened after the early feminist movement. The early feminist movement was good. It was about the right to vote. It was about to just have opportunities for education. It's actually, and then about something, equality. Then something really toxic happened. And the sexual revolution happened where it was this upending of what they saw as traditional morality. The reality is traditional morality isn't just traditional. It's natural. It's how we're built. It's how we're made. It's psychologically our desire for commitment and love, our desire for someone who's not going to just walk out the next day. That's built into us. And as women, it's built into our bodies because we can have bring life into the world. That takes nine months. And then you've got a child, and that's 18 years. Right. So sex is a big deal, and it should be. But the sexual revolution upended that and said it's not a big deal. It's just a thing you do whenever you want with whomever. It doesn't matter. It's just some pleasure for a moment. And it's totally up to you. You make the rules. Right. There's no morality around sex except 
you know, don't rape maybe. <laughs> maybe that's, and even that, we have a huge crisis with that today, right? But there's no morality around it. It's there really isn't. what you want it to be. And that sexual revolution agenda, which hijacked the feminist movement. So then they're like, well, now if you're feminist, you're going to be pro-sex without any rules, without any responsibility. And who liked that? Crazy men like Hugh Hefner, that playboy who wanted to sexualize women and sell object money unhappy. off of objectifying them and doesn't make them happy. He died unhappy. And I talk about this all the time. I say to people, if you think that you are a modern feminist, like I refer, mm. I call that ra radicalized feminism. I, I, we it's should false. stop calling it's it fake. feminism it's altogether. Not even it's feminism. not because yeah. they see yeah. how they treat people yeah. like you and I, right? Yeah. Who are talking about lie. real issues. But I always say to and people, and they won't talk about this, by the way. Oh no, they won't. And yeah. they would never welcome. They us pretend in women walk away from a. Walk away from a one night stand and they're fine. There's no, no they're there's not. no baggage. There's, shame. there's no there's issue. Shame. They, yeah. and, and and they don't feel happy about yeah. it. And I have girlfriends that make a living out of writing writing about their sexual deeds with mm. men. And I I genuinely feel so sad for them. Mm. I feel so sad for them because I say it's not what you want and it's not what men want. Yeah. And yet you've convinced you've let a society convince right. you that this is normal right. to pen all of your bad dates, all of your bad sexual experiences because you probably watched an episode of Carrie Bradshaw and mm -hmm. Sex in the City too young. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be like Carrie Bradshaw. Like <laughs> I, I did. The first thing I ever wanted to do was to be a journalist. Mm -hmm. And we have this this culture that says, yes, yes, more of this. Instagram gives even more birth to right. this. Social media, where I always say, like, if you want to get a, a million followers on Instagram, take your top off. Do do yeah. something and say, yeah. I'm empowered. Right, mm -hmm. this is empowerment to me, and then you have younger generations like Ariana Grande, who I think is miserable, who yeah. I think is actually unhappy, who goes out and says is talking about in her music about uh, being on top of men and 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 yeah. waking up the next. She's morning. objectifying herself. She's objectifying herself yeah. and, and calling it empowerment. And she has over a hundred million little girls like calling looking at it her. Empowerment, right? Yeah. It's very very bad, and 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 when if you if you criticize it or you say that's harmful, it's like well, you're shaming women. It's not to shame. Like this is not to shame. This is to liberate. This right. is this is to this is because we know what makes people happy. It's not it's not you're not going to be happy sleeping with five different guys in five months. You're not going to be happy divorcing. You're not going to be happy getting an STI. You're not going to be happy getting pregnant unexpectedly or getting an abortion. Like we know these things don't make people happy. Right. So we want people and we know that sex. And this is the other thing, actually, the studies show and that the Atlantic just did this piece on this two weeks ago, these two, and they weren't even pro-life or anything, these women. And they wrote that they do the studies and this is years of social data. So it's not just their study, it's other studies that people who are married have the most sex and the best sex. And people who are married and go to religious services at least once a month are even in a better category than right. the prior category. So what does that say? It says, if you want to be happy, <laughs> if you want a great sex life, life, get married. Right. And also realize that your marriage is not just something that you contract between the two of you, but that there's a third person in the marriage. Right. There's a There's God. Who created marriage and who who created both of you and so it's a spiritual thing now it's a it's a covenant between it's a sacrament between each other and now. it's beautiful and it's and beautiful it's really and funny it's good because and what that's we're the good at, message what we're hitting at is some, I tweeted something you know my tweets can be a little controversial because I'm always I'm always trying to push push the world forward a little bit. I poke a little bit mm -hmm. because I think that that's the best way to get people to debate and to pay attention to something. And I got into so much trouble. It was months ago. I had a lunch with a girlfriend and she said, we, we were talking about all these people that are just really crazy, women that are just really crazy and really bitter and really unhappy. And and they're making they're making it seem like it's about Trump. It's not about Trump. There's no way anybody has this much time to be this hateful about anyone, right? And he's what just, I said- I mean, he's, a, he's just a, he's used as a scapegoat. He is a scapegoat. Yeah. And what I said was at this lunch, this young woman said to me, for for women that don't have children and, and don't get married, and the expression that she used which got me in trouble was, if they don't use their eggs, they scramble, mm. right? And it <laughs> obviously is something that pissed a lot of people off. But I think a broader way to say that, which is that mm. we are, like you said, tradition, mm. right? There is something natural about yeah. it, right? And when you keep trying to, to buck the trend and, and to intentionally not do something that comes natural to you, mm. right? Like you want to find someone, you want mm. to find a partner, you want to have children, and yet you let society convince you otherwise, you will end up like Kathy Griffin. Yeah. You will end up like Chelsea Handler. You will end up like Sarah Silver. And I don't mean to call these women out, at, you know, to make them feel badly, um, but I There's wonder if they made, if they made different decisions yeah. and invited yeah. something else into their life, right? Rather than feminism, mm. if they would be if they would be different, if they would be more fulfilled, yeah. And yet they look at people like us and and think there's something wrong with that. Like mm. I don't need a man is the the new 
empowering slogan we're women made, can do it by we're themselves made for each other men and women are made for each other it's symbiotic it's beautiful it's complementary it is and it's i mean and i think you know again back to the whole thing of shame i mean shame is natural to the human person to feel it because we know it it triggers when something is wrong right. right and the moral law which i believe is there's an absolute moral law that exists don't kill don't rape don't commit adultery which is connected to other sexual ethics and that mirrors of biological reality the way we're wired psychologically the way our bodies work so this when i when you say traditional yes it's traditional and it's and like you said it's natural it's right. these are two things that work together and that's why all the social data backs up that getting married waiting before you get married to have sex getting married and then having a child so doing it in that order is where people are more successful economically, psychologically, they're happier, they're healthier. That is what the data shows. But I, you know what I think it is though also, and this is why I, I kind of try to be in the middle here, because when, I, when these people say, no, now we have to let people have abortion whenever they want, and they're out screaming and they're fighting for babies to be murdered. You say, where does that come from? Do I think these people are fundamentally evil? Mm -mm. No. Yeah. I think they're fighting for something that is fundamentally evil, but we have to ask ourselves, why? Right. Why are they fighting for that? And I think what happens is that you do you make a decision when you're really young because society tells you it's mm -hmm. okay and it's normal. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these people have had abortions, right? right. A lot of these people, right. like me, right. had sex when they right. were young. Mm -hmm. And so they think that if they go the other way, they suddenly become right. a hypocrite. So they start fighting for something yeah. that they don't even believe in anymore. And it it's almost incumbent about, upon people like me, like I wish I had done what you did. Mm -hmm. Maybe the space for the people like mm -hmm. me who didn't wait until they were married is to say to people, I wasn't happy. Right. I wasn't right. fulfilled right. and I wish I had done what Lila did. Right. And at any moment, you can change your mind. Mm -hmm. You can recommit. Like when you, you brought up your husband, you can't recommit. Right. And that's just as beautiful as an act and you can be on the side of in goodness. In many ways, it's more beautiful. It's more beautiful. It's like it's having the courage to, make to you were wrong. change your life. Yeah. And that's hard. That's hard it to do. It takes a lot of humility a lot yeah. of humility and it's not popular right this isn't mm -hmm. the stuff that's gonna uh, get us on late night tv right. that's for sure they're not gonna be like oh what right. wonderful talk about chastity well that can change we can change all that i love right. it. it's like prager become the media like become the media, become the media let's create it that. let's make let's girls want to watch this yeah. and and have conversations right. about this and make decisions in their own so right. i think the most beautiful thing a woman can do is wait until they're married yeah. uh, uh to have sex yeah. i really do i admire people that mm -hmm. took that route i wasn't that girl but i hope that people watch yeah. me and, and hear me talk about that and say, you know what, I still have a chance to make that decision. Or I can turn around and say, you know what, now I'm going to start, I'm going to wait until I meet that person. Because when you do meet that person, as you said, there is something so spiritual. Right. It's, it it is transcends spiritual. societal mm -hmm. expectations, conversations, and you realize mm -hmm. that, that society is doing something really tricky right now. Yeah. Yeah. And I think we need to, uh, sex is beautiful, right? And that's why women taking off their shirts on Instagram, they get more followers. I mean, there's something about sex that's just incredibly attractive. I mean, it's w the way we're wired. It's the way we create future generations and make the human race continue, right? But I think that's part of the message too. It's like sex isn't bad. It's like not that sex is, you're not thinking sex is good enough. You're treating sex like it's not good enough actually right. yeah, that's I love the that problem argument. yeah and so i think media has a huge role to play in it and but we can change that we can change that one step at a time doing our part to say look sex is amazing marriage is amazing right marriage is awesome i think part of it is that marriage is looked down as is not that great not that fun that's the ball and chain you settle down you can't travel anymore kids are gonna ruin your life you know there's all this negative messaging right. around marriage and family and kids and you know it's just boring and and that's not true you know no. and that's why you know being married now i'm like it is awesome i know we're only six months in but it's it's a gift and i'm gonna i, I know it's hard it can be challenging but we're gonna work on that and this is our life project together, right? And it is, and with God, we can do it. Right? Like God can. God, it's okay God to can talk about God. Yeah, and, well, and all too. of these things that 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 society makes you think is not normal. And I think especially the public school system has really done a number on children, mm -hmm. and you literally come out backwards. Like they just send you out into yeah. the world it's, backwards. Everything yeah. you think you should know, yeah. Like you yeah. come out being like, yes, abortion is empowering. Um, don't need a man. Like think about how weird that is. Yeah. I, I learned actively in a feminist 101 course in in high school that there was something virtuous about hating men yeah. hating men what are they trying to create in that classroom mm. to come out bitter and angry yeah. towards the patriarchy patriarchy and men i mean the message is our sex means nothing it's just this thing you do just make sure it's safe right and make sure there's consent that you know putting animosity 
negative negativity between the sexes. So like men are out to get me or women are not to be trusted or whatever. And then the message that marriage is not, it, there's no message about marriage. Like marriage couldn't matter. Marriage doesn't even matter. If it's five days, whatever, go to Vegas, yeah. undo it. And then it's, and then it's totally sterilizing it. It's like the sex is just this biological act. And it's like, it's not, it shouldn't even be sex education. It should be relationship education. And it shouldn't even be relationship education that some bureaucrat, some government person or some Planned Parenthood entity is teaching little kids, that should be taught mostly in the family, in the religious community, in by the parents. That's something that is is about morality and about relationships and about how to live, like how to how to treat other people. It's not just this bio biology lesson. It's much more than that. It is. And 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 so, we're seeing this sort of societal breakdown of family values. Like they're they don't want family. They hate the nuclear family. They hate the concept of normalcy, right? They'll celebrate uh a trans by whatever you want to call it relationship, but a man and a woman, mm. uh they 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 reject it in society. Like you're not given you're considered a token of evil. Like that that this all needs to be just it's true. This mm. all needs to be destroyed. Yeah. And we need to make men women and women men and um what I see the reason for that, I think, is because, like you said, the family unit is responsible for for instilling values right. inside of the children. So, if you want, right. if you don't want the children to have any values, if you don't want the children to believe in God, if you want the children to believe in government, if you want the children right. to believe in Hollywood, exactly, yeah. break down the family it's a, first. It's a threat. So, the family, a strong family, a strong mother, a strong father, who love each other, who respect each other, who fought for each other, and are committed to each other for life, for having kids, is a threat to a powerful bureaucracy that wants to control everything. It is a threat to the the elites who want to sell you products in entertainment or wherever else who want to control the way that you think and, right. and sell you stuff. Right. I mean, it is a threat to that. And I think it's a spiritual thing too. I mean, I'm a Catholic. I believe that there's spiritual powers at work here. And, you know, that's a debate. Anyone could debate, debate on that. But I think that this is a fight for the soul of our country and the soul of the family. Right. And so all of these things, abortion, the breakdown of sexuality, the breakdown of marriages they're a threat against the family they're how, a threat against how the do child. we revamp it though That's how do you revamp it? it's, it's, a, it's a huge yeah. thing i, I yeah. hope that this plays some really small yeah. part in yeah. it right because we we know that millions will mm -hmm. see this and great but yeah. how do we go about changing the radicalization mm -hmm. of the ed education system yeah. because that's where people are getting radicalized mm -hmm. in the school system yeah. i'm a big advocate of alternate education approaches so charter schools um private schools as they can be afforded homeschooling right i was they attach a stigma was, to that too I, was, I know i was i was blessed to be homeschooled for ah, a lot of my education that, that's why you came out yeah. so good okay okay <laughs> but i mean other people i mean it de one public school can look very different from another depending where it is depending on the culture around it what city it's in what community it's in but i think that it comes back to our ed the education system i think is a product of our families right how strong are our families how present are our families um, is there an intact, is there a mom and a dad at home? Because that's already going to set you up for more success, even if there are negative forces at school. So there's a lot of pieces in play, and I don't have all the solutions as far as the public policy side right. on education, because that's a complex conversation. It we could talk, do 10 podcasts on that interview, 10 experts. But I think it comes back to one person at a time. I believe one person choosing to put their trust in a power higher than themselves, to give their life up for something bigger than themselves. Right. Not just about me, but about self-gift. And that's what, I mean, going back to sex, it's about self-gift. It's giving to, to you because I love you. In my marriage, it's my, I'm giving myself for my husband. He's giving himself for me. That's at the core of what it means to be human is self-gift. Right. That's what, that's what ennobles us and makes us our ability to sacrifice for each other, right. our ability to love. So I think as a cultural change, our society needs to recognize there's absolute truths, absolute moralities that we need to acknowledge and say that they're good. They're not there to limit us and hurt us. They're there to set us free so that we can then love. We can love each other and treat each other as we're meant to treat each other and, and, and be loved the way we're meant to be loved. That's the end message. Right. And, and you know, it's so interesting that you say that because right now we live in a climate where narcissism is celebrated. Yeah. It's encouraged at every turn. Narcissism is encouraged, right? That's what Instagram's all about, right? Yeah. Narcissism, well, they're making money. Clicks, I mean, the, likes, tech, the tech companies make money. How many money likes can I get? How many people can see me? What is abortion if not the mm. ultimate narcissism mm. where you say, I not only did I get to enjoy mm. myself, but I've decided that my life is way too valuable to be inconvenienced by another yes. child. That is narcissism, yeah. right? Yeah, where it's, it's all about you and nobody else ever. Mm. And that's why we're seeing this rejection of God in society. Even some of my very conservative followers 
followers, um, I, as I love to read the comments and get feedback, they'll say, oh, I love this, I believe in this, but I wish we'd stay away from, you know, the God conversation. <laughs> and I always want to rebut and say, what bothers you yeah. about the fact that somebody is giving themselves to a higher power? Right. Have you ever met anybody that's deeply religious that mm -hmm. completely offended you, right? Because they believe in what? Family, yeah. right? They they want to live their life according mm -hmm. to the Bible um, or, or the Torah. Like what what is it about that you instantly reject about God is, is a better question. Right. And you can, I mean, you can go the, I'm not going to talk about God. I'll just talk about the social data, the outcomes, and that all backs up these moral things we're talking about. Right. But look, our, even our our Declaration of Independence references a creator who endowed us with certain inalienable rights. All of our money in yeah. God we trust. <laughs> in God we trust. <laughs> and there's a reason for that because if there's not a higher power, if there's not a higher authority, where is it at? Government decides. They can change what our rights are. They can change what the dignity of the person means. It's all relative. It doesn't matter. You can't have a society that has justice and love in it that way. Government becomes God. Yes. They don't realize that's, that. That's the moment that God. you reject God, you yeah. actually are accepting government. Yeah. And and yeah. that's why in all of these communist and socialist societies like that, I mean, think about what, yeah. what the tenets of of, of communism brutal. is really about. No it's God. Brutal. You know, it's just it's just us. And yeah. and that's a sad society to live in. You know, whether you believe in God or not, and an important question to ask an atheist is, do you hope you're wrong? Mm. Do you hope you're wrong? Do you hope that there's something beyond this? Because if you if you hope you're right and you hope that there's nothing left in this, that's a, that's a scary society to live in. Yeah. And there's, I mean, there's a lot of evidence for the existence of God, but at the end of the day, it comes down to a choice of, do I want to trust that there's order to the universe? There's a lot of evidence for it, right? Order of the universe, the design of the universe, the design of like our bodies, how they're made to have children, our relationship with men, all these things we're talking about have an order in the universe as they have an order in the moral law. But do we want to put our trust that this is a good thing, that right. this is something that's going to help us if we are obedient to these moral, moral realities, which is not, again, like, you know, chains around our wrists. It helps us to be free because we avoid making bad choices. Right. We avoid do choosing things that take away our happiness and create division between, in relationships, division between our own bodies, our own children in the womb. I mean, that's what abortion is, this ultimate division. I don't want you. Right. right? I, I'm against my body and the child in my body. Right. And so do we want to trust that there is this higher power is good and loving and just? And that if we can say yes to these laws, we will actually be more free and more who we're meant to be. Right. And that's Christianity. That's what I mean, I became Catholic in college because I did a lot of study, a lot of research. I was like, do I do I believe in any religion? You know, do I am I a Muslim? Am I a Mormon? Am I, you know, whatever, Buddhism? I studied all these different religions. And I came to first the historical reality of Christ. 2,000 years ago, entered human history. It's never been the same. He came and fulfilled all of the of all of these prophecies of Judaism. And he came and said he was God and died for us and then rose again for us and totally transformed civilization afterwards. So Western civilization afterwards was never the same. That's the correct. respect for women, the respect for children, the respect for people seeing as equal in dignity before God. Those are Christian, Judeo-Christian ideals. Right. And those and, are under threat right now. And those are under threat. But that's beautiful. That's good. Right. It that, is that, beautiful. That's, that's freedom. Like, and that's good news. That's a good freedom message. Freedom is an interesting word because here is something that I've realized. And you do have to credit the left in terms of the brilliancy um, behind what they've been able to do in society because they did it so quietly, like a thief in the night. They've managed to somehow sell things as freedom that are, in fact, bondage. Mm. Right? So I, I completed about a year and a half of not drinking last year. Um, and... It was just that. It was just that the thing that they tell you is freedom, right? Go out, drink, party, have sex, do this and that. In the end, it starts to feel like bondage and you become this person that's not happy. So how is it freedom? Just because you took a picture, you don't remember what happened last night. You don't, that's kind of a scary thing, right? I don't, you don't remember what happened last night. Um, and they've managed to, via the media and via the education system and via the destruction mm -hmm. of the family unit, um, sell people their own demise. Yeah, I mean, I think, literal salt to a slug. Yeah, I think you're spot on. That they, They've taken in the language and they did this with abortion i mean you see choice, choice. reproductive empowerment mm -hmm. these terms used to mask straight up murder right. killing a human life who's totally innocent and trying to just grow and they put these positive terms on it and it is it is completely false right because liberalism sounds better than conservatism right i mean right nobody even knows i think most people today who would think they're liberal they're not actually liberal i mean the the the, the extreme progressivism that's taken root in kind of mainstream a lot of the democratic party especially on abortion and and and, and things like marriage is not it is not 
I think, traditional liberalism. So that's a whole it's other true. conversation Classical about... Classical liberalism, which you and I both know, Dave. I know. Yeah, and he yeah. talks about that. Yeah, but, but you're right. They take words and they literally make them mean the opposite. So freedom is now sex anywhere, anytime, you know, sex, dr- completely drunk that like you said this, like the hookup culture, that was the sexual revolution, right? This right. is, we're sexually free now. No, you're actually enslaving you're, yourself. You're sexually. enslaved. You're, you're enslaved. enslaving yourself. And then abortion versus choice, right? This is empowerment. This is women's rights. Those are great sounding words. Right. I'm for choice. I'm for women's empowerment. I'm for women's rights. I'm a woman. I'm for human rights. But taking the life of a child in the womb who is completely defenseless and as a mother t- surrendering your body to an abortionist to, to have them destroy that child, that is not empowerment. Right. It's an act of violence, it's lethal violence. So what what have they done? I mean, if you st- if you can take the language, you can take the mind. Right. If you can you can go into the language and, and mess up the language and distort the language, then you can distort the th- the thoughts. And so it is so important, like you're saying, we have to take back the language here. We do. We this do. This is not choice. They're programming this is not us, freedom. and they're programming us really young, and and they, and and they have schools, the ability like to do yeah. it because they know that, especially in these one parent homes, the parents don't have time to look over their their children's homework when they get home. The parents don't have time, and and that it all it all feeds into one another, where you break down the family, and now the teachers are in control, and and they can feed you whatever. They they want. Mm. So whoever is telling that children when they are that young that sex, you can pick your gender, yeah. you can have sex whenever you want, you can do yeah. whatever you want. This is normal. They, they in many so ways, are creating minds and then in turn creating a society, which is where we've ended up today, which is really radical. But I have to say this and let me know if you agree. I'm optimistic. Mm. I'm optimistic. I think that we went really far left and in the process, a lot of people woke up and I was one of those people who woke up and said, whoa, <laughs> you know, <laughs> not that liberal. Are you optimistic, cautiously optimistic, pessimistic? How do you feel? Yeah, I'm extremely hopeful. I'm extremely hopeful. I think that we're not made for this. Human beings are not made for these ideologies that are harmful, that really enslave and and brutalize each other. We were made for love. We were made to want to walk justly. We were made to walk justly with God. I mean, that's how God wanted us to be originally when he created us. And I think that there are many people out there that are waking up because it's hurting them. They're hurt. People are not happy. I mean, even that study on sex, they're not happy and they're having all the sex, supposedly can have all the sex, you know, and there's no laws about it anymore. Right. And they're not happy. Right. So I think that one person at a time, there's awakenings that are happening. I think there's a lot of cultural work being done by nonprofits and families and churches, um, Prager, you know, a live action, trying to change the narrative on this, educate, help people connect the dots on it. And then just people, one at a time. I mean, the power of your marriage, when you get married, the power of your marriage, the power of your love is going to be an example to other people. Right. And and when you when you have kids, you know, that's going to be, an, in the way you love your kids, that's going to be an example. And that it's a good thing. Marriage is, and children are good. And you have a so, podcast coming out. Yes. And right. I'll be talking about all of this and more. What's it called? It's called Lila Rose Podcast. Lila, Lila Rose, Rose Podcast. Show. Yeah. Great. Well, I would love to be a guest. Yes. Yeah. I would love to have <laughs> I'm you. inviting myself. To, uh, no, <laughs> please come on. Yeah. And no, because we have to give each yeah. other platforms. Yeah. We need to give yeah. um, these young girls that are yeah. questioning themselves. And, and I just remember being young. I was yeah. saying to you before we started this, and I'm so happy my my twenties are over. <laughs> I turned thirty, and I'm so happy because I just remember being wrought with insecurity mm. and not knowing what was right and what was wrong, but pretending I was so happy. Yeah. And now I feel settled, and it's because of Beautiful. all of these conservative tenets. <laughs> um, it's because of marriage, it's because I know what my life mm. is going to, and it's because I know that I'm on the side of goodness. Yes. That I'm, I'm on the side of goodness. I'm fighting for lives, mm. right? I'm fighting for people to be who they are in their natural state and not what society tells them is going to make them happy. Yeah. Um, so it it really is a blessing. Uh. Do you, do you have any, by the way, are we able to talk about your news? Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Of course, yeah. It's a baby now. So <laughs> yes. I'm six weeks pregnant. She's so exciting. Yes. Yes. Yeah, we're thrilled. I and so I was excited. telling Candace earlier, I'm like, I might feel like I have to throw up during this interview. Right. <laughs> really bad morning sickness. But Congratulations. Yeah, Honestly, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled too because I'm just like somebody with your your more morality <laughs> should have 20 children. Oh. <laughs> I really do believe that. So well, I'm 30, so we'll see. I don't know. 20 yeah, you might can do not it. be just in the Just get it up. All Twins, right. we'll, triplets, We'll work tuplets. hard on it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we wrap up um, every episode by letting you leave one message to mm-hmm. the world. So you're going to look at the camera. Okay. We're going to put two minutes. You can use all the two mm-hmm. minutes or less than. And if you uh, could have one message fall upon the, year, the ears of every single person in society, what would it be Lila Rose two minutes on your mark get set go God created each of us for love to love and to be loved he is love God is a God of love and 
the work I've been involved in at, to stop abortion is because I think every person, I know every person is created in God's image and likeness. You are created in his image and likeness. I am. He loves us. And he loves us so much that he himself came down to earth to die for us and to give his, his life for us because of our sin, because of our, our pain. And he wants us to be free eternally and have eternal joy with him. So no matter where you are, no matter what you've done in your life, no matter what's happening in your life, there is a beautiful plan that God has. He created you for a purpose. He created you with beauty and with purpose and with meaning and there is a beautiful plan that he has and that's why i'm fighting for every single child that's why we have to fight for every single child because god created them with that purpose and fight for each other because each of us are in his image and each of us we have a plan and something that he is calling us to do that was so great so great thank you so much thanks, for coming Tanda. on thanks for having me great conversation Such an interesting conversation it's good and it's Thank you guys for watching the latest episode of The Candace Owen Show. I hope you guys enjoyed the conversation as much as I did. As many of you guys already know, PragerU is a 501c3 nonprofit organization, which means we need your help to keep all of our content free to the public. Please consider making a tax-deductible donation today. I would really appreciate your support.